This is, we're doing it wrong, sort of, vaguely. Uh, this is meandering, really. Um, I'm Juliana. I'm your host on the, uh, the Agatha Christie's The ABC Murders. And, um, anyway, I'm starting back up where we left off. Uh, we were just about to go into a big group meeting, uh, to kind of talk about the victims that we have, because there were three, three separate victims in three different cities and or towns, um, all with a murderer contacting Hercule Poirot. And the last one we saw our murder again for the first time, I think, since the initial, like, start episode um and we learned that um since it's 1935 this guy served in world war one and probably had a mustard gas attack and is also probably sh suffering from what was known as shell shock or what we now know as ptsd and has decided to kill three people while following an alphabetic f you know fetish so anyway Moving on from that, um, so with the help, uh, you've just obtained mo uh, modifiable objects to use. Select the objects in your inventory and click on the icon. It's only available if a modification is possible. Interesting. Okay. So, um, Hastings gave him a uh, self-propelling pencil. We know these better as mechanical pencils. Um... Let's modify it. Ah! There we go. And there we are. I, I now have a spring. Okay, so hopefully Hastings will forget that at some point. Alright, so while we're here, let us investigate our... Okay, so that's apparently not a thing right now. Um, there it is. Um, okay, that that that's not cool. Oi! I hold to concentrate on my guests. Okay, that's one. Yay! Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of what he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. Okay. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. The song says, sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. Mm. Interesting. Alright, last, but certainly not least. Alright. Donald is always on edge. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. Hmm. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? Aww. Sad day. I wish to thank you all for coming. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? Hmm. 
Again, dear girl, please be patient. Mr. Proro, how dare you address me by my first name? Please excuse me, mademoiselle. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name, by chance, starts with B. Must we go into that? Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but... I don't remember anything else. Aww, Nothing I haven't already Donald. said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Allons, surely sisters have no secrets. She never spoke about any of that to me. Do you believe me or do I have to repeat myself? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Oh, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She hmm. dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Yay! Nope, that's not it. Um. Okay, guess not. Nope. Okay, hold on. Yes, he is clever. Uh, is our killer the sed seducer? Yes, he is. Um... <sighs> he convinced Betty to go out with her. Um, he probably likes trains because he uses the timetables. Um, so we've decided the killer is not impulsive. Is he generous? Yes, we've had this discussion mostly about the fact that, you know, two men would be in prison if not for. So, ladies and gentlemen, Crash. we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control, and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... You do not have the money to pay for the train, is that it? It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. 
Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. Sorry, I was playing a bit the of the meeting was one, most so. fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our gray matter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, there are throat afflictions. If you don't remember when we were the reading about... The first victims suffered from bad throat. And that was precisely the speciality of the third victim. Dr. Clark. Yep. We have a lead. It would pay to Sorry take a closer that. look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Justin. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Are you leaving Cheston for good? Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank I hate you, that Miss Gray didn't get to say anything. Have a nice trip, but anyway. It's not my, my, my game. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. All right, we, so we shall go um, up to see Miss Clark. It would be rude. Really? It would be. All right, fine, fine. Can't even do anything in the same room. <clears throat> This poor woman is very ill. Please tell the nurse to hurry. Please. Sorry, I'll find it in just a second. There we are. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. It, it would be rude. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. The that telephone in the hall is ringing. Bit. As she can't answer to get it herself, I think Poro should go. You know, you could go faster, man. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? 
I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Well then. Alright, let's see. Um, Alright, um, so I think I will cut it off here now that we have a new objective that I haven't really started on. Um, and that's to get the injection to Miss Clark. Anyway, uh, so thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. If you like what we're, a lot of what we're doing, maybe not all of it, you can still leave comments and thumbs down, those sorts of things. Um, please subscribe. We would, we really appreciate that. Um, so anyway, um, hopefully this will be only a few more episodes. Uh, I think we're kind of getting close once we've kind of talked to everybody probably two more times so hopefully four more episodes will be done anyway um thank you so much for watching it's very much appreciated all the feedback you're giving us is appreciated um i will see you in the next video thank you for watching meandering with julia go toward the light jimmy <laughs> Go toward the light! Creepy ghost sex. You look